There it is, the signature trophy. Presented yearly by Adam Silver, ironically gold in all its glory. The fingerprints and champagne residue have told stories. This is the ultimate goal for me. I just went through a 482. A lot of ups and downs, but somehow we made it through. I mean, I'm humbled because we all should get goosebumps when we see that playoff decal placed on the hardwood. Michael, LeBron, Isaiah, and Bird, Magic, Kareem, Timmy, and Dirk, Kobe, Two Clyde, Shaq, and Akeem. These are the names I desire to be mentioned amongst. The pressure's never too much. We perform better in the clutch now. Who better than us in these best of sevens? There's two rules. You either win or you get to step in. And my plan, by the time this thing ends, is for my team to have attained 16 wins. And then it's finally time to come and claim what is rightfully mine. All these heights that I climb. Tell a commission to introduce me to Larry O'Brien. And then I sit back admiring it all in its shine. Hashtag champs might be something that you should tweet about. Ben Rowe of Rock just might give you a shout before the referee walks out and tosses the ball up. A couple layup lines for you. This here's the warm up. He's a self proclaimed best player on the planet. Is this going to be his last game playing in the land, Ben? I got another question for you. Are those tuxedo pants? Bruh, yeah, there's no belt. He probably should have buttoned up the cardigan or bust out the cummerbund. I don't know. It's better than that purple monstrosity they had going the other day. So I think this might be his freshest kick of this entire series. Yeah, it might be. That remains to be seen. But this right here, oh. I love this. The disrespect, hashtag, the pettiness. Oh, so this is what you were doing on your off day. You flew out to Cleveland, <laughs> put up a billboard, and then flew back to Atlanta to do the show. I know Ro Parrish. I, mean, I, I see how you get down. You might know me just a little <laughs> bit. This is what we do. Ro Parrish, Ben Lyons, of course, you the warm-up game four is going down tonight. Finals edition. I mean, hey, Cleveland, uh, we have a problem. Yeah, the Warriors, might be the final finals edition tonight. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, Cleveland has a chance to, to maybe extend the series, but it's just not looking good for them right now. No, when KD's playing that type of basketball, I don't think there's any team on the planet that could beat the Warriors. And that yep. goes for the Rockets or anybody else who can anybody. get five dudes to play basketball because what KD did the other night, hitting shots from the moon, yeah. I mean, that was something I'll never forget. I mean, you predicted that you said he would have a triple-double, just came a little bit short. Short. I said he's going to go nuts. I mean, feel it. 43 points. He had 24 at halftime. He put up those numbers. They were absolutely ridiculous. Uh, yeah. The what, efficiency. What the efficiency is crazy. 15 of 23. The night before the game two, he's 11 of 14. I mean, he's just been in a zone the last two games. It's so much fun to see. And his fellow players and teammates are showing him a lot of love. Uh, we've got a lot of depth. We've got a lot of guys who can play. And they're all chipping in. And But we should probably go back to Kevin Durant, shouldn't we? <laughs> And that was a huge shot. He took that from about 38 feet out. And just to put a dagger, you know, in them like that, that was a huge shot. This is one of the reasons old guys like me didn't hate it when Kevin went uh, to Golden State. Because he made them pretty much unbeatable. Right. You know, it, it, it was really, we knew there was going to be a power shift. And we are like, they get Kevin Durant, they're going to keep winning. You guys asked me what's the difference between the Warriors. You guys asked me this last year. What was the difference between the Warriors the previous year and this year? And what, I, what was my answer? All right, there it is. You know, Kevin Durant was my answer. You know, he's one of the best players that <clears throat> I've ever played against that this league has ever seen. His ability to handle the ball, shoot the ball, you know, make plays at his length, at his size, at his speed. So um, there it is. Wedding ring is much bigger than mine. It's very massive, Ben. <laughs> Cleveland is the first team in NBA history to be down three nothing in consecutive seasons, and uh, no team has ever come back from that. But they made the finals two years in a row, or four years in a row now. So at yeah, least they're nice. in the finals. Yeah. Winning the conference finals counts for something. I right? mean, it should, but you know, uh, yeah. what does it take to be number one? <laughs> two is not a winner, and three nobody remembers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Let's take man. a walk, man. I think we got to talk to somebody who's in Cleveland that can let us know what's going down. Of course, joining us from Cleveland, glad to see her again, the first lady of the warm-up, Rise Gold and with a glad to see you. You're gleaming as usual. So uh, we were texting a little bit earlier. I have to know, what exactly is the redemption team? Because you shed some light on that as we get started. <laughs> the redemption squad, squad team, team, crew. Yeah, crew. You know, in addition to getting rebounds, Tristan Thompson is on PR spin. Uh, I had the chance to speak with him at Media Day, and he was telling me he came up with the name. He coined this nickname himself about 
two days ago um, for himself and Rodney Hood. And he's calling them the Redemption Squad because basically he was saying before these finals, they didn't really have a role. And now they've been thrust into a lot more minutes, bigger roles. Rodney Hood just got inserted into game three and, and had big impact scored points and he was talking about mindset how important that is not only within this series but over the course of this entire season for the Cavs the ability to stay positive and stay ready and that's come to some fruition for them as they've both been able to be contributor contributors for these Cavs as they made what at the beginning of the season some people didn't even think they might make the playoffs here they are in the finals so redemption squad team crew um, it's a nice coin term that Tristan Thompson made for him and Rodney Hood. We got the Hamptons Five, the Redemption Crew, and Roz, you're part of the warm up <laughs> crew. I like it as we head into game four. You mentioned Rodney Hood. That was definitely a card that Ty Lu had stashed in his back pocket. Is he running out of cards? Like, what else can he play to try to get them a win here and extend the series? You know, it was a really uh, tough situation losing game three because there were moments that were right in the hands of that the Cavs had moments in their hands to take advantage in fact actually speaking with Tristan Thompson yesterday we talked about just that um, how hard it is when you have an opportunity to win against a really great team and you drop those you really can't afford to make those types of mistakes and it does start to mount up and all that the Cavs can do right now is think about the next play this one game they, they've talked about it in media day and in practice and shoot around they can't think about having to win four straight they've got to think about game four LeBron James has had some really monstrous moments. I think they're going to they're going to need more f from him to be great, but it's going to take a team effort. Um, I think Rodney Hood was able to be successful in Game Three. There was an element of su surprise there too. I mean, the Warriors you can scout for it, but if you hadn't seen a guy all all series long, he has an opportunity to kind of shock you. So he had some success getting in the paint and creating some points. Um, but I I just wonder how much the Cavs can continue to expect Stephen Curry to go three for 16 and clay to also not look like himself even draymond green um that was that was an opportunity so i think right now you might be looking at a game where this they can either keep it close or the warriors might come out and give them a knockout punch so speaking about that knockout punch is there a way that the warriors do not win tonight or is it a done deal are they definitely breaking out the brooms you know, I think pain is a good teacher, and that's something that, you know, generations have said over time. And the Warriors have had some great lessons against the Cavs as they've played them four years in a row in the in the finals. Uh, remember, you know, they know not to doubt any LeBron-led team. They were down 3-1, and the Cavs came back and won a championship. So they know not to let their guard up or to relax with the lead. And then just this very last season, they had a chance to go 16-0 uh, and 0 in the playoffs and ended up going 4-1 and 1 to beat the Cavs. They were in this very same position, up 3-0, and then dropped game four, and, it, and the Cavs came out explosive. Uh, now this Cavs team is very different. It, they had to drop 24 threes in order to get that win. But... This Warriors team has been so talented all season long. You've seen they've struggled with consistency and urgency and concentration at times. I think those lessons are good indicators that'll keep them hungry enough and locked in enough to pull this off. Roz, last question here. In 2016, when the Cavs won the title, they took the Jet to Vegas. If the Warriors win tonight, where are you guys flying to? Uh, well, I know for a fact they're staying in Cleveland. And I remember the 2015 celebration here in Cleveland when I was still uh, reporting for the Warriors. It was at a local steakhouse, and um, it was really nice. Uh, they had open bar and steak and lobster and crab cakes and all sorts of food, and family and friends uh, were there family, kids, moms, ownership, players, coaches. It really had the feel of a wedding. It was so joyful. People danced in the middle of the floor. I think OT oh, Genesis, um, I'm in love with the Coco. <laughs> like, that was the song that season. They were blasting it on repeat. Everybody was dancing in the middle. And, and I imagine this every year has its own feeling. Last year's championship, there was a sense of expectation because Kevin Durant came. This year, this season would be a failure without a championship. But that 2015 celebration that happened in Cleveland was so sweet and pure. Kerr just came. No one really thought they were going to win a championship. They thought they'd be a playoff team. You know, you think even Steph and um, 
Steph only had one kid at the time. Now he's on his way to three. They're all dads now. You know, they're all superstars. Clay and Draymond weren't Olympians and all stars like that yet. The, the, the expectation, the size of stars has changed. At that moment, just to, to wrap, I remember that 2015 team used to celebrate every little thing. Being the division champions, they had t-shirts made. Um, when they won the Western Conference Finals, everyone was pouring water in the locker room. It was just everything, every step of the way was new. Nobody had been there before. So that sweetness, I don't know if that you can ever recapture that, but winning a championship, that is forever. It is hard to do no matter how much talent you have. And I'm sure they will have a uh, very joyous party if they are able to sweep the Cavs tonight. I like the way you said they, even though we know somehow, some way, you'll probably end up <laughs> around the team in some yeah, way. Enjoy the casino <laughs> after party tonight in Cleveland, Ross. Have fun. Thanks for checking in. We appreciate it. Ross is awesome. Way no to get problem. the OT Genesis in the show. Who oh, you got? What a legend. She's fantastic. Yeah, she is. She's been a great addition this year. Who you got? Who you got? Woman. Everyone's saying it's going to be the yeah. Warriors, huh? Yeah, I mean, 60-40 right there says it. I know a lot of people that want the King to get a victory and hope he can extend the series. I just want to see more hoops, man. So while I'm rooting for the Cavs, I'm, uh, I'm predicting the Warriors Yeah, tonight. I think the Warriors. I think Larry will be hoisted by this man right here. Who is Larry? Larry O'Brien. That is the trophy that you will see. Uh, yeah, Golden State. 47 guys. signed autographs, then had a commercial to tell us to Google? That was an MVP <laughs> performance the other night. You're the real MVP. Twitter. You should follow me on Twitter because... I got all the funny videos. I have interesting things to say. Send me a tweet. I'm tweeting the day. Some people just take it to the extreme, man. Trying to get used to Twitter. NBA fan on Twitter. It's pretty cool. Keep on tweeting. Twitter. That's what it's crazy. Something that actually happened. J.R. Smith outscored both Steph and Clay, yet the Cavs still lost. Now, something tells me, Ro, this our guest here, if he got an offensive rebound in the NBA Finals, he would not dribble out to the three-point line. No, I don't think he would make that type of no. decision because he's actually a champion and he's been there in situations. <laughs> the man that needs no introduction, right. Brendan Haywood, joins us. The, when he's taking a break from being petty on social media, he talks about basketball for a living. The big Whoa, petty. I'm not Welcome petty. The show. The I'm, petty. I'm, I'm, I'm being misrepresented already on this show. Okay, I'm, this is my first time here. I'm not sure if I like how I'm being treated so far. Oh, uh, come on. You, you'll adapt. Okay. Let, let's talk a little game. Let's take a little game three, shall we? What'd you see? What happened? And, and have you ever seen a performance like we saw from KD in the finals? Well, we've seen a lot of great uh, NBA performances in the finals. KD was right up there with what he was able to do. He was carrying his team. And that's basically what it came down to. LeBron played great. Uh, uh, Hood played great. J.R. Smith had a good game. But they just couldn't overcome the fact that KD had an excellent game. The Splash Brothers weren't hitting. It didn't matter. KD carried his team, made plays down the stretch. He was rebounding, assisting. Then that three from deep. Yeah, what what, what more can you say? From Oracle. Yeah, what, so, yeah. yeah. what uh, more can you let's say? Let's see what people were saying on Twitter about Game 3 as we take a look back at the Twitter sphere. And yeah, everyone was excited about this move from the Rucker. Oh, I mean, what? What that, were your thoughts, Brendan, when you first saw that? I was like, I can't believe he just pulled an All Star game dunk out <laughs> in, the, in, in the NBA Finals. Again. <laughs> Yeah, if only Rodney Hood had some help. You know, we've been talking all season long. If we can just surround Rodney Hood with the right players, then maybe the Cavs would be great. Maybe. They just might have a chance to win. They say it's all good in the hood. That's what they say. Yeah, the Cavs, Jamal Crawford's right. I mean, he's been, you know, covering these finals this entire series. They came out looking good in, in, in Game 3. It's what they did in Game 4. It just wasn't enough well, yeah. last year. Cavs came out with great energy. JR was hitting shots. K-Love was hitting shots. But it just wasn't enough. That guy, yeah. too much. There it he is. is not nice. Shouts out to Will Embiid, the GOAT of Twitter. I, honestly, Chris Webber is starting to get me upset because he's trying to steal the name The Unicorn to call Kevin Durant The Unicorn no instead way. of Porzingis. But we've never seen anything like this, have we? No, we've never seen a true seven-foot guard. Not a big man with guard skills a guard that is seven feet tall that's what Kevin Durant is nothing like it yeah that was ridiculous a 30 footer right there at that point in the game ridiculous he shot that from the locker room pretty much he shot that from LeBron house this one uh, from J.E. Ski who uh, did some great czar the telestrator work there highlighting some of those Cavs fans who kind of knew the inevitable mm. crushed <laughs> I've had that face many a time in a Nick yes you have game. as a yeah. Nick fan <laughs> And uh, now, how do you feel about this, about the idea uh, of KD going to Golden State and, and guys like CJ saying he kind of wish he was on another team? Uh, I think it's KD's decision. Um, I, I didn't mind the fact that he left Oklahoma. 
I think it kind of threw the balance of the NBA off as far as the power, the power scheme and everybody and everything else. But at the end of the day, it's his decision. I don't mind him being there. Yeah, CJ probably doesn't have a problem with uh, him playing in Portland. Yeah. No, he doesn't. And Jared Dudley, after this ring, I hope KD goes somewhere else. So should KD leave after getting the rings with the Warriors? Uh, I do not think so. He should keep the party going, <laughs> keep getting these rings, because right now I don't really see anybody that can beat him unless the young Celtics step up next year. But, like, let's, let's take a step back here for a second. The Warriors had to win a game. Game seven on the road. Yes, Chris Paul was injured, but let, let's not like say that the NBA is this set and it's too easy for the Warriors. You still have to go out there and play a full season, stay healthy, and play against some of the top players in the world. So do you think it's kind of boring to watch these Warriors run through the Western Conference year after year? I, I don't think it's boring because we had some great series this year. and They they were tested by Houston. I think that series might have been over a little bit quicker had Andre Iguodala not got hurt. He means a lot to this ball club. But they were definitely tested this year. It's not a foregone conclusion. There's going to be a lot done in free agency, um, especially where LeBron decides to go next year. Sorry, Cleveland. He out so <laughs> so uh, pretty much once we decide where that is that means there'll definitely be some more spice to the league and like I said earlier I really believe Boston is up and coming you just saw the percentages Golden State is arguably the greatest wow. team of all time mm -hmm. by the number so you just touched on it briefly but is this LeBron's game last game in Cleveland wearing a Cavs uniform yes it is I'm oh yes hey I'm gonna say listen LeBron is all about his rings he's all about winning championships I don't see how the Cavs can bring in enough talent for LeBron to feel confident in his ability to beat these Golden State Warriors in the years to come. I think the brooms come out tonight. And after that, LeBron's going to have some U-Haul trucks in front of his house, and he's out of there. Cleveland, it's a wrap. It's over. He had a good run. He's gone. All right, so the U-Haul's driving away on I-80. So where is it headed? Now, that I don't know. It could be anywhere. It could be, I've heard rumors from Houston to L.A. I've heard a crazy Boston rumor recently. I guess that means Kyrie would have to get traded. Where, where, uh -oh. yeah. where do you want the U-Haul to drive on its way out of Cleveland? Where would you like to see him end up next season? I really don't care. I just want to see him be somewhere where uh, he brings somebody else with him. It's competitive, and they can truly challenge Golden State. Long as it's a team I think he can truly compete with, I don't care where he goes. L.A. might be fun, though. Interesting you talk about Golden State, because the rumor is that maybe LeBron would go to Golden State. State, and if Draymond would, would have him join, he said he clearly would, would exit. Yeah, Draymond's not rolling with that. No, nah, he's not having that at all. The Big Petty, thanks for joining us, bro. Hey, man, Big Petty. Is this nickname going to stick? The Big Petty? Actually, it is going to stick. I think uh, so. I like it. Yeah, it's definitely going to stick. The warm-up, LeBron, is it his last game? Step getting up shots. Will he be the MVP of the series? We're going to chop it up about that in a minute. Consistency is key, and I'm rocking the all-black playoff shoes. These are the last shot 14s, and as you can see, they're a little bit dusty, a little yeah, bit warm. Yeah, they've seen some fun nights, hey, haven't they? These are the OGs. Purchased these back in 1999, $50 off uh, back in Dallas back in the day. I love them. Why did they put Byron or Brian Russell on them? All right, now, <laughs> usually we wear basketball sho uh, shoes on this show. True. It's a basketball show. Yep. Today, I'm rocking the air trainers because the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to be needing some training shoes ah. after tonight. The sweep is happening, and I see them, you know, maybe doing some cross-training. <laughs> some sprints, some hiking. To disrespect the pettiness. Love it. Yeah, there it is. Well, now, no disrespect for Kyrie Irving from J.R. Smith, his former teammate. Kind of weird to see him rocking Kyrie's the other night in Game 3. You know, he's been consistently rocking Kyrie's through the finals and even at the end of the last Boston series. I'm not really sure why. Maybe he thinks Kyrie's still on his team. You know what? I've seen a meme that says that. <laughs> Shouts out to Swaggy P, who's been repping for all the current and former Adidas signature athletes rocking the D-Rose 3.5. You've been doing some investigatory journalism, thinking he might pull out some Kobe's tonight. He just might. I mean, he's Broke out Gilbert Arenas, Dwight Howard, T Mac, you never know who's next. Now, oh, JaVel McGee rocking the Jesus Shuttlesworth to the arena to, uh, the other night. Yeah. Representing for Lincoln out in Coney Island. And the Gucci fanny pack. If he had had the John Wallace on, I would have given him a lot of respect. Anybody can go get the Jesus Shuttlesworth one, but John Wallace's character from the movie? <laughs> yeah. Tip my hat there. But I do give him a lot of respect for how passionate JaVel is about fanny packs. He is dedicated. I saw the interview with Trey Kirby. He's really mad at people wearing them, like, on a clip or as a satchel. Like, he wants full-on dad at Six Flags. Here are your cut-the-line passes. Here are your quarters for the arcade <laughs> fanny pack. So, JaVale <laughs> McGee, the fanny pack MVP. The real MVP and the unsung MVP for the Warriors. Someone make this argument that it is Draymond Green. Yeah, absolutely. He does all the little things, all the things that don't show up in the stat sheet. He does fill out the stat sheet on most nights. And he was able to... you think he was trolling LeBron when he wore the suit shorts the other day? Absolutely. That's what Draymond does. He is the <laughs> troll king, and he is sitting with the first lady of the warm-up. That's Raj. Check this out. Oh, why would you be watching the warm-up? You're playing the games, right? Oh, yeah. So it's live during the game? Yes. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's live before the game. It's oh, yeah, I'll be getting ready. I don't be on Twitter. 
Right. But that's when a lot of fans are gearing up. They're asking questions. They want to know what you're wearing. They talk a lot about your outfit. The warm up. All right. It makes sense now. Okay. I got it. Right, right. Actually, your outfits are a huge part of conversation. We talked about your suit and shorts. Uh -huh. Then at the podium last game, you said something about game five. You have a great outfit ready, but you don't want to wear it. I got a game five outfit, though. It's pretty dope. I really don't want to wear it, though. And now everybody at, on Twitter is like, what if we don't see the Game 5 outfit? Like, what is the Game 5 outfit? Tell us. I hope y'all don't see the Game 5 outfit. Um, <laughs> however, if, if and when y'all don't see the Game 5 outfit, we'll do a little segment or something to show the outfit. All right, well, then tell me this. If you couldn't wear it to walk into the arena, where could that outfit be worn elsewhere? Eh. A date? It's got to be a really uppity, but yet casual date. It's like... <laughs> Wait, how can you be uppity and casual? These things contradict each other. I gave you a clue with that. You didn't catch the clue? Oh, you already told me. He already told me before that he likes to wear the suit and shorts because it's like being dressed up and dressed down at the same time. So it's an uppity, but yet very casual date. This is the hard-hitting question, and I want you to be honest. You're always honest. Who wore the suit and shorts better, you or LeBron? Who started the trend, and, like, who's dominating that scene? I wouldn't necessarily say I started the trend because I'm somebody. I mean, I know that there's someone who was wearing a blazer. I mean, obviously not like the reporters who sit behind the desk with, like, basketball shorts on. Charles Barkley did that. Exactly. But there was somebody, I'm sure, in Europe or even in America that wore shorts with a suit jacket before me. But in this NBA, I, I, I was last year's news. He did that in the, at the NBA awards. Last year, and everybody looked at me like I was crazy too. Like, oh man, you got on shorts, ha ha. And all of a sudden, see quite a few guys with shorts and <laughs> blazer on this year. It's pretty interesting. Okay, last up, did you know you became a meme last night? I heard about it and I've seen it. Um, however, y'all can meme all y'all want. I'm getting that picture framed. What were you saying to KD or yelling in the back of his head? I was yelling the wrong thing. I was so excited. I was like cussing him out, but like, <laughs> like excited, like, I don't know. It was just like heat of the moment. This dude just hit the, one of the craziest shots yep. from deep <laughs> in the crazy moment. I was just excited, super excited. Awesome. You should have all of you guys sign that picture. That's that's a that's a dope moment for you guys. Yeah, definitely a dope moment. I'm uh I'm getting that frame for sure. Thank you for your time, Draymond. No problem. Thank you. Awesome work by Ross. Ben Lines clear out. Oh, here we go. The revenge game we finally been waiting for. We thought we were gonna get it in two. It didn't happen. Three, it didn't happen. Tonight is the night. JR saves the day. We will see about that, or will it be a coronation of the Golden State Warriors? The brooms are I'm out for they towards that one. Let the record show. <laughs> Yo, it's not the NBA Finals until you see the doctor, and it is not the Finals until you have Celtics and Lakers in the clothesline. Celtics and Lakers was so turnt. I mean, think about this, bro. These guys are going at it in the NBA Finals. There you have the captain, Larry Legend. No flagrants, no techs. No ejections. No ejections. No just nothing. Just playing basketball, and what's amazing is Larry Legend hits this shot here to win the game back in 84. 125, 123, and they're mugging each other. Pretty much. And then after Tragic Magic, there was this redemption, Magic Johnson. Now, you think he should have dropped it off, but I mean, I think he did okay. Around the back pass there, Magic? Get Maybe. teammates involved? No? Yeah, I think it worked <laughs> out for the Magic Man and the Lakers that year. Maybe yeah. the best Laker team to win the title. That might be true. That might be true. And then, speaking of the Cavs and Warriors. Let's look at their game fours. Andre Iguodala started this game for Bogut and never looked back. They never lost it's after. The beginning of the death lineup, I guess, or now morphed into the Hamptons, Hamptons five. five. And that's probably where Iggy won the finals MVP is that game. And then you have this game where, yeah, the Draymond game. Wow. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, dog. Think you about that it. one moment, that, that play, changed, history changed forever. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm doing the same thing. You step over me. I'm a grown man, dog. Not going to happen. And then you have Kyrie. Look, they were down 3 nothing, and it took an NBA record for them to keep the series going. Remember this? We had the, the viewing party with Light Skin Jermaine. We had the prosciutto going. <laughs> JR was hitting threes from deep. That was a magical night last year. That was. Maybe we'll get another magical game for. Huh? Magical Wouldn't that night. be nice? More prosciutto. Oh, man, in that hotel suite. And then before that game, <laughs> JR got on, on the Twitter and said Cavs and seven. Yeah, maybe do it again tonight. Tweet it's, it out, listen, JR. Hey, it's a great idea. Work before. Maybe you extend the series one more game. I don't know if you're going to get the win, though. I don't know. But, I mean, JR, God, we've talked so much about him this series. Never in my wildest dreams a week ago, going into these NBA finals, that I feel like he would be such a point of conversation. But no, I I'm think happy to say that he is. Yes, you're still sitting here like a proud <laughs> father. Uh, yes, I'm also proud of the first lady of the oh world. Oh, my God, up. crushing She's it always out Always giving queue. us awesome content for yes, the show. Yes, look at these three legends in one pick, huh? I mean, you got JR, you got Jimmy Goldstein, and, of course, you got Roz in the middle. I love it. I love it. Now, here's Roz sitting down with another legend, Grant Hill, out of the queue. Hey, Ro. Hey, Ben. Hey, everybody watching the warm-up. This is Roz Goldenwood with Grant Hill at the NBA Finals Game 4. And, Grant, well, first of all, how are you doing, Grant? Hi. I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I'm, how are you? I'm well, thank good. you. Good. Uh, well, I wanted to know... There's a chance for a sweep here. Now, last year, the Cavs were able to win game four, muster something up, they, but they had to hit 24 threes. I mean, I think Kyrie had 40 points. This is a very different roster now. Do you think this current Cavs team can avoid the sweep? Wow. Well, with LeBron James, you can never count him out on any team that he's on. You made a great point. Kyrie Irving last year uh, was on this team, was sensational in that game four. Uh, you know, it's going to be tough. I, I do think that Cleveland's going to give it their all. They don't want to get swept. You know, this could be LeBron's last game if he were to get swept here in Cleveland. So I know he's going to play great. I think uh, the rest of the guys are going to uh, step up and, and play great basketball, maybe their best performance. I still just don't know if it's going to be enough. Golden State is just that much better. Uh, I think one of the two Splash Brothers will have a better game, if not both of them. And, uh, and Kevin Durant has gotten his confidence and his rhythm. So uh, I, I do think Golden State will win this game, but I think Cleveland will give them all they can. You brought up the Splash Brothers, in particular Stephen Curry. You know, how often is he going to go three for 16 from the field, one for 10 from three? Do you think that a lot of that was the Cavs doing or also Steph just missing some shots? And, and what are you expecting from him today? Yeah, you know, even the greatest shooter in the game at times struggles with this shot and maybe uh, loses some confidence. I really don't think it was anything that uh, Cleveland was doing against him. It was nothing different than in the previous games. He just had an off night. And for someone who had an injury at the end of the season, missed the first uh, round of the, uh, the playoffs, uh, he really, I felt like, got his rhythm against New Orleans and was back to that elite level against Houston. Played great the first two games, just had an off night. But that's the luxury of this team. He does, he or Clay or KD, I mean, they don't have to all be great. Uh, one of them, the chances are, will be great. And it was KD the other night. I think Steph, like all great players, will bounce back and have a better game here tonight. Okay, so if the Warriors were able to pull off a sweep against the Cavs, you know, KD had 43. The game before that, Stephen Curry hit nine threes, which is an NBA Finals record. What would you need to see in game four from either one of them to define who would be Finals MVP? Ooh, <laughs> uh, you got me here. Um, they're both, as of right now, both deserving. Uh, a lot maybe will depend on what happens here tonight. Um, I don't know if we've ever had a co-Finals MVP. Um, I don't know if that's ever happened. We've had co-rookie of the year, so that, that maybe could happen. But um, I, I think Durant with that game three on the road, uh, even though he was not great there in that first game, um, but just a signature sort of performance. What he did uh, reminds me of like LeBron uh, back in the day when Miami went to Boston game six and had that signature performance. So uh, my nod right now would be to Durant, but, you know, We'll see what happens here tonight. Curry could go for 40 himself, and uh, they get the win. And so a lot, a lot can happen. But I, I think right now for Golden State, it's between those two guys. All right, real quick, what's your pick for tonight? What's happening here? I think it's a close game. I'm going to even say we're going to go to overtime. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, okay, that's specific. So we'll be here late. Uh, so, um, yes, overtime, I think Golden State wins by six. There it is. Thank you, Grant, for your time. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. <laughs> Back to you guys.
Overtime, huh? That's what Grant's calling. That looked like a little bit of a Carolina color that he had on. But... Oh, it's Duke and Stanford right there. <laughs> but LeBron in potential Ooh. elimination games. Those are great numbers. I'm, I'm, everybody loves these LeBron numbers, but the only number that matters is the one in the win, Kyle. You're so funny, man. You look at these numbers. They're He-Man numbers. They're that's Hercules great. numbers. He's flexing. That's, that's, that's perfect. And you're thinking, well, why is he in elimination games to begin with? I'm just saying. Mike didn't have three potential elimination I games. No, I didn't, I didn't say I didn't I say know anything hat, about though, dude. Mike. I didn't say anything about Mike or Scotty. However, all I know is it's six for six. Uh, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Come on, I appreciate what he's doing. Everyone went nuts and broke Twitter when KD Yo. went for 43 and 11. He's going for 43 and 11 in every elimination game this Listen, playoff. I have Man, love for LeBron, but you know I'm just tired of the excuses. He needs more help. No he needs excuses. More Listen, he picked the players. Okay, he is the pseudo general manager for the team. Well, we so. we know who picks the players around here. We know the guy yes, who do. orchestrates everything, and that's uh, TV's own Tony Rock. Of he's course. calling the scenes, uh, calling the shots behind the scenes and since this is our last show of the season yeah we got to check in with the goat tony rock right here on the warm-up what's up everybody tony rock here for the warm-up the season finale i want to thank everybody for supporting the warm-up for the last two seasons it's been amazing an amazing job an amazing journey i've gotten to go to the nba finals i mean i was on the floor at the finals doesn't get any better than that i made friends forever and my brothers Roe Paris and ben lyons i'm sure we're going to see each other a lot Bro, you know what it is. Ben, go Knicks at some point. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for supporting, but we still have a basketball game to get to tonight. The wrap-up, the NBA Finals, or well, is it the wrap-up? I don't know. I think the humane thing to do for the Warriors would be to put the Cavaliers out of their misery. Let them start their summer. J.R. Smith, Cancun's waiting for you. LeBron James, free agency's waiting for you. I wish you the best. I don't know where you're going to end up. Hey, Brooklyn Nets, not a bad location. We got a 40-40 inside the Barclays Center. Something to think about. Uh, thank you guys for supporting the warm-up, like I said. And we got basketball to get to tonight. Game four, Warriors-Cavs, Warriors sweep it in four. Tony Rock for the warm-up. The Barclays. Get out of here, Rock. Go hey. back to, where are you, in Orlando Listen, or hey. somewhere tropical? Where is Wherever Tony he is, Rock? Yeah. he is enjoying hey, life. Shouts out to Tony Rock, our third <laughs> member of the warm-up. Yo, ever since October 5th, 2016, you know, me, yourself, and Tony, we've been pretty much locked in. We yeah. auditioned together. Yeah. They said, okay, we like you guys, and we've had <laughs> a great two-year run so far. Honestly, this show, this job, getting to be friends with you guys has changed my life forever. I have a new appreciation for the game of basketball. Got to fall in love with the great city of Atlanta. <laughs> Coming True. down here every single week, but no, nah, it's been an amazing run, and I can't believe two years is already behind us. It's been awesome. Yeah, it has gone by very quick. Shouts out to everyone involved with the warm up, everyone that tweets at the warm up. Special shouts out to you. Uh, I mean, you said it all yourself, and, and I'm looking forward to season three. You need a tissue? You gonna cry? You get a little misty? You get a little bit? <laughs> That's my co host right there. <laughs> Yo, here's the best of season two of the warm up right now on Twitter. We're having a good time. Ro Parrish, Ben Lyons, Tony Rock, Thanks, and we do a show yeah. called The Warm Up. Yes, we made it. Yes, we did. We're here. Oh, no. What's up, Aaron? The Warm Up here at CES, better known as Ground Zero for the Robot Apocalypse. Tony Rock from Brooklyn is on our show. Do you think he'll be able to find some technology to help him get a jump shot? Uh, ain't no technology for that. Ain't no technology for that. You remember the ball that was on the, on the yeah, tongue yeah, of the kicks? Yeah. You hit that button three times, you got you you, you you flying high. Today is the day All-Star Ballot is open, so go and punch your ticket for J.R. Smith. I don't know you were about to say that. Coming to you live from Stable Center for NBA All-Star 2018, it's the warm-up. First of all, nobody told me you guys were going to wear sunglasses, and now I'm out here squinting all show. <laughs> is Steph Curry going to win the three-point shootout this year? Definitely. Definitely, even though he's not in it. Do you know who's in the three-point shootout? Um, no. Do you know who's in the dunk contest? No. Do you know who's in the All-Star game? Yeah, the All-Stars. Everybody eats here with Bradley Beal, All-Star Weekend. And I'm talking to the man, the myth, the legend, Allen Iverson. No, you the man. You I, I have to give it to you. It's your world. I'm just busy. Come on now. Snoop. First two chains, along with a couple of professional athletes. Besides hanging out with the warm-up, what's the rest of your All-Star Weekend look like? You going to the Travis Scott show? You hanging out with Drake? You know, you going to the club? What are you doing? You know what? Uh, I'm not. The, I'm too old to club, man. Big game. Sleep. I'm playing tonight. <laughs> big time players make big time <laughs> yeah. plays in big time games. This guy is truly an all star. He's got something left in the tank. When you look good, you play good. When you play good, they pay good. Fresh off that all star break, a very relaxing all star break for us, huh? We got to spend a lot of quality time with our families. Yeah. Really kind of recharge. Bruh. 
I want, no, I want. No, no, no. Do you think you can guard me? I'll hit you with that Matador D, as Walt Clyde you, you said. Nobody hit guard me with the Matador want, want D. Ole <laughs> defense. I got a question for the warm up crew. The Warriors gonna get out of the West. Of course, the Warriors are getting out of the West. He's coming out of the East. It's happening, guys. The yeah. JR Revenge game. I'm in the building. I'm so excited. <laughs> JR forever. Oh, wait, 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 wait. But, 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 what? But. So Twitter, yeah, please hit us all up because we don't care what we say. And Only I feel like that's what the warm-up is. Sporty but cute. Which players from the 90s do you wish had Twitter back then? Uh, I need I need a Michael Jordan Twitter. Absolutely. I need Michael, I need Reggie, and I need above both of those guys, give me a Gary Payton Twitter account. Gary appreciate it. Let's go. Let's you go. Come on, man. Hey, I can yeah. do that too. Hey. I'm never going to do it in social media. All right. Well, Ever. Ben and uh, Rowan and Tony, uh, have a great time up there. Good luck. Listen, I'm funny in Shaq. You white in Ernie. Let's do this. We appreciate you watching live on Twitter around the world. I appreciate the warm up, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Bro, Tony, Ben, we are out of here. Peace. Peace. Wow, that was wow, awesome. Shouts out to our super producer, Cat, putting that together. And this is the whole crew right there. The Wow, this, this is this is the group. That's the championship photo right there. Yes, yeah, that's right. We, we deserve a parade. This whole team, man. You know what Best team I ever played for. Shout out to TJ and the Twitter team as well. There it is, right there. We will be taking a parade down P Street. This is what <laughs> we do right here. It's the warm up. Golden State gets the sweep tonight. Jr. Forever.